All right, guys, welcome back to our Alice in Chains album review series. We, uh, of course, capped it off last time with the final studio album that Lane Staley would sadly appear on um, with their self-titled album. You know, others call it Tripod or Three-Legged Dog, whatever you want to call it. And, you know, after a request, um, I said, you know what, we'll go ahead and do this next one here with their MTV Unplugged um, album. This one is... You know, I figure it's important enough to talk about such a landmark in the in the band's career. And, you know, just a disclaimer again, which I, I said the last video, uh, but this will not be a part of our, like, album ranking that we eventually do. Um, but I figured, hey, you know, someone wanted to hear this thing get talked about, let's do it. You know, um, such an important, uh, again, another, a really big, like, important part of the band's uh, career, a big highlight in the career. And like a milestone, you know, this is a, uh, this thing happened after, um, you know, they had been, the band had been on hiatus, you know, uh, after the, the struggles with the tour, you know, having to shut down tour dates and stuff like that. I'm pretty sure of, um, some of that stuff was going on with Lane and the drug problems. And, uh, I know, and then he went, you know, there briefly in 95, he went to rehab, did the mad season record and everything. Um, but this was overall a, a really, really problematic time for the band. Um, you know, they hadn't really heard from Lane. They had, again, they hadn't played in, in years at this point, uh, 96. So really, really kind of crazy um, how that, that, that they finally got all the gang together, you know, here for this thing. Um, and, you know, Lane isn't looking in the greatest shape in this one, too. It's, it's kind of, it kind of adds, you know, the, the vibe of this album is it's, a beautiful thing seeing the band get back together um, for this thing, but it's almost it's like a little heartbreaking to watch because you're just like, man, what you know, what a what a waste of you know talent just gone, you know, uh, with Lane, you know, it's just really it's really sorrowful seeing him in this state. But I mean, as we'll see here, he just knocks it out of the park. So, anyways, we kick things off with just an epic performance of Nutshell that, of course, comes off a of jar of flies. And just really, really beautiful. I love the, uh, started off, you know, I mean, Mike Inez with that acoustic bass. I freaking love the sound of acoustic bass. Those, those things are just, have such a cool um, tone to them and everything. Um, and, of course, he's got Rid on that bass, you know. Friends don't let friends get friends haircuts. Of course, talking about Metallica, who's sitting in the front row, who just cut their hair off for uh, their, their album Load. So just kind of a knock at them, which is pretty funny. But yeah, uh, you know, so then they also have a guy in here who does rhythm guitar. I forget his name uh, off the top of my head, but he's doing like, you know, rhythm guitar. So Jerry can solo and stuff and that sort of thing. Um, but other than that, you know, it's just the standard line of uh, Jarl Flies and Up, you know, lineup with Mike Inez on bass. Lane and Jerry doing vocals. Jerry, of course, doing lead guitar as well. Um, and then Sean Kenny on drums and you know, you, each of these guys comes out one at a time uh, at this intro with Nutshell. And then Lang comes out and gets an enormous, you know, reaction from everybody. Sits right down, you know, belts into it. Uh, pink hair and all. He, you know, he, he colored his hair up for this thing. Um, but just a beautiful, beautiful performance of this song. Um, really, I love the kind of different solo Jerry did uh, took on this, you know. Um, in fact, sometimes whenever I'm playing th that song on the acoustic uh, guitar, I kind of change it up and do the solo that he did during this and the and like the fills that he does in the chorus of this. Then we hop on over to the next track with Brother, um, which of course comes from Sap. And this is, uh, again, just a beautiful performance. One of, my, one of the highlights uh, of this version is where all the instrumentation stops and then you just get... Lane and Jerry's vocals just harmonizing at like a perfect level and the camera shot is like lined up perfectly where you see them both at an angle singing and it's just like it'll give you goosebumps. Incredible, incredible moment on this album. Everybody's just on top of their game. Then we go into another, uh, you know, Jar of Flies track with no excuses. And that acoustic bass is again a shining, a shining, uh, you know, gem up on this album and on this track too i mean man i just again i love it. i need to get me an acoustic bass i've been talking about it for a while wanting to get one so maybe eventually i'll you know sometime soon i'll get one because they're just that 
ever since I saw this album, um, you know, when I was like, God, I was a kid, but, uh, I always thought that acoustic bass was just such a cool, cool thing, you know, and you don't, you don't see those too off. Like, I know I've been to some guitar centers and stuff that actually didn't even have any, um, or not guitar centers, I'm sorry, they've, they've had them, but music stores, like local ones and stuff that didn't even have any, um, but anyways, yeah, no excuses, hearing that, that, you know, iconic uh, bass kind of groove that goes on during that song on acoustic is just awesome. Then we hop into Sludge Factory when we get a, uh, that's the, 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 from the self-titled album. And it's kind of funny because we get a mess up right off the bat. You hear Lane, you know, singing his way through. And then you yell, fuck. And then kind of, you know, it, I, I like how they left that in. I, I mean, that's just a funny moment. You know, you get to see the band kind of goofing around and laughing. Love stuff like that. Um, that kind of adds to the, you know, the experience of this whole thing. Um, and then after that, it just drives them that much more to knock it out of the park. Definitely, this is one of my favorites off here because it's cool hearing such a heavy song. Um, you know, again, off the self-titled album, just turned into this acoustic track, you know, and just the vo the vocals, you know, it, it, as you know, if you've heard the three-legged dog version, you know, just the normal version of the song, studio version, the, vocaling, the vocal work is layered, like, on top of each other of, like, the high range, low range, and all that stuff that harmonizes with itself. Lane just belts out the high range part which just sounds absolutely incredible they kind of they do take out the kind of the ending stuff on this one like the kind of robotic uh type thing that goes on during like the actual studio version of the song but that's okay this it was just fine here incredible incredible version of the song love it one of one of the standouts for me on here then we go on to a, uh our first track off of dirt uh so far on here we got down in a hole and another just really, really pretty rendi uh, rendition of this song. Um, Lane's vocal work, I mean, he's knocking out of the park. You're even seeing Jerry, you know, after, like, I think, like, the first uh, chorus or whatever, kind of, you know, grin over at Lane, and the guys was like, damn, we got this, you know? So it's cool. So I like seeing stuff like that, too. Um, you know, seeing seeing the guys proud of themselves and everything. And, um, you know, it... uh. Yeah, and I'm just reading on here. It was it was actually three three years. Uh, they took a three year hiatus, but yeah, I just sorry I saw that on there. I was like, damn, okay, so it really was that long. But um, yeah, no, down in the hole. One of my one of the highlights at this song for me uh, of this version is uh, really even on the studio version near the end of the song. You know, you get like that opening verse kind of going on, and then like the you know, the really, like, gloomy and almost, like, uh, you know, watery kind of sounding uh, effect on the vocals that goes on um, singing over the over that verse, you know, saying, like, all I want to be inside of you. Well, of course, they don't have that kind of effect on the voice here, but Jerry sings, like, the, the main part of that verse, and Lane sings that part. So I think that's just a really cool way um, they, they dealt with that and everything. Then we hop on over to Rooster. Uh, from also from Dirt, awesome, awesome stuff. Um, the that song is a very powerful one, you know, for Jerry, uh, especially uh, as that was about his dad, you know, over there in the Vietnam War, I believe, and uh, just really a, another solid version of this. It's cool hearing like the dun 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 dun, you know, that bass line on the acoustic. I keep talking about that acoustic bass, but I just again, I'm such a big fan of it, and then the uh, the vocal uh, melodies during the chorus uh, or during that pre-chorus is just just incredible stuff. And Lane belts out, you know, the just the sh shouting and kind of higher range vocals and just knocks it out of the park. Then we go on to Got Me Wrong from Sap. Another one that uh, just you hear, you really hear in the forefront the uh, during like the that chorus, you know, I haven't felt like this so on that whole part. Um, Lane, you know, really belted out, and, and it's just crazy hearing him uh, sound this good looking in this kind of out of a shape, uh, you know, thinking maybe, oh, he might be, you know, withered or something, not not able to kind of belt it out like he is, but he's just doing it, and it looks like he's not even trying. It's crazy how this dude, I mean, such a, just a masterful singer, and it's just, they're knocking it out of the park, track after track after track. Then we go on to Heaven Beside You. Um, which is more of a Jerry-led one, but it's cool, you know, kind of hearing, uh, get, seeing him get the 
kind of take the forefront here. And that one comes off of, of uh, the self-titled as well, of course. Um, and I just really, really dig that, you know, this kind of groove to this track. I, You know, if you saw that review, I, this is a solid track. Probably one of my least favorite ones off that album. Uh, but I, I've always dug the track for sure. It's got a cool groove to it. And again, cool seeing Jerry kind of take the lead vocals uh, on this, which is kind of the first one uh, off this acoustic um, or off this unplugged set that he really got to jump into. So then we go um, or, or take the lead on. But then we go on to Wood from Dirt. And what an amazing, amazing. This is a highlight for me. Big time, one of my favorites off here. I love hearing the like heavier songs uh, turned into, you know, uh, and, and kind of and you just stripped down, raw, unplugged. That that's that's what's always really interesting to me to hear like those to see how how they're gonna work out and they they make such a drastic difference, you know, um, from the original studio recordings. And Wood does exactly that, you know. Hear that acoustic bass thumping on, and just laying probably one of his strongest vocal moments throughout this whole show is when he's belting out that chorus and just hitting those notes and, you know, screaming, if I would, would you, you know, love, love, love that. That's a major highlight off here for me. Then things get even darker with another track pulled off from the self-titled Frogs. Man, th this is another one that much like on Sludge Factory where, of course, on the album, the, the layering of the vocals kind of all, you know, meshes together to make almost one voice, but that has, like, these echo-type, you know, features to it. But this lane just strictly deals with, like, that top, that high range during that chorus that just makes it such a cool, cool version of the song. You get to hear him just belt it out um, without the layering parts, which, of course, I love. If you Again, if you saw that review, love that whole vocal layering aspect, but it's cool to hear him just do it. This thing just stripped down raw, and, and it's a really powerful track. And this one, they actually did include like that, uh, kind of that that ending, you know, where it just gets real dark, and Lane pulls out like that old fashioned mic and is singing it in, you know, um, incredible, incredible stuff. Then we hop it on over to what's kind of the official ending of it. Of course, there was an encore that we'll talk about. That also, I mean, it's a part of the album. Um, but over now, so that's always, you know, the perfect way to close, it closed out the self-titled album and another cool one to see Jerry, you know, uh, take, take, uh, lead on for the most part vocally, uh, and kind of handle, uh, part on, on this show, you know, so of course we'll see that him do that more often as time goes on with some of these later albums, Jerry's going to take, I mean, he's, he doesn't really have a choice, but to, you know, help help the band progress by, you know, embracing his role as kind of that new leader. I mean, he was already a leader within the band, but he just, you can tell later on um, after this, you know, on like the next album, we'll talk about Black Is Way to Blue. And like, you know, as the band is current still today, where Jerry is much more comfortable in this vocal role. So it's cool hearing him back then get to sing, you know, and take the, take the uh, front lines of vocal work on here, you know, when he was still not, exactly you know as comfortable in the role in fact it was uh in, in the role but in fact i've uh read where lane really pushed jerry uh on that during the self-title i'm like hey man you are a really good singer you've got this you know um but just really really pretty version of over now let me get a song that was only on this album they wrote it that they said as they said they said they were fucking around with uh you know during sound check and threw this stand together and it's a really cool song uh the killer is me and and I mean, I really dig the uh, like the chorus and everything, and kind of the melodies they got going on. But it's not my favorite thing uh, off here or anything. You know, it is cool to hear, and it almost makes me wonder like what that would have sounded like on an actual studio album. You know, I mean, I could hear it. It sounds like it could be off of a, I like I could just imagine it in my head, like with the production and the studio recording of it being on the self titled album. How cool that would have sounded. Um, but it's a really it's a really cool song. Solid stuff. Then, of course, we close out with, you know, everybody, the thanking everybody, Lane saying he wishes he could get everyone uh, out in the crowd a hug, but he's not gonna. So, <laughs> kind of joking around there with them, and just a really, really, again, sorrowful, yet beautiful uh, moment in time captured for the band. Uh, really sad seeing Lane in this shape, but, it, you know, you see 
you see these guys, you know, having fun and uh, with this thing and just really happy to be there and having a blast playing all these awesome acoustic renditions uh, of these iconic tracks from them. So just a fantastic, fantastic um, show, whether you got the DVD like this or the CD, which I have the CD coming in the mail. Um, the DVD copy was always the one I had, but I, I would like to own it on CD too. Um, but just incredible stuff. Definitely, I said at the end of the last uh, review, whenever I talked about how I was going to review this, my favorite MTV Unplugged of all time. I know that often either goes to like the Eric Clapton Unplugged or the Nirvana Unplugged, which are awesome in their own right. But this one has always just held a really special place to me. Um, me being just a huge Alice in Chains fan. And just, again, just kind of the the band didn't play for three years and then came back to do this. It was just such an awesome milestone moment uh, for the band. But anyways, guys, yeah, uh, you know, this was super cool to cover. I'm glad, uh, you know, whoever, I, I forget who it was right off the top of my head, but uh, whoever suggested it, uh, thanks so much. Uh, I know somebody suggested the live at the Moore um, concert, and, you know, I did take that into consideration, but, like, maybe if it was done, like, maybe if it was suggested, like, before, you know, we got so far along in here, I maybe would have, you know, thrown it in there, but now, I mean, this just kind of, uh, the person who suggested this suggested like the perfect time. He just finished the three. Uh, I think we. I think I'd finished Jar of Flies, and he suggested so this one was still upcoming. So I was like, hey, why not? Uh, but you know, as as you guys know, I mainly keep it you know strictly to the studio stuff. And again, disclaimer: it's not gonna be a part of the rankings. I just want to make sure that's clear. But I just I'm glad we got to cover it here. And sadly, Lane Stadley would pass away uh, due to overdose in 2002. Um, you know, just really, really dark stuff. If you just kind of read into his last, you know, his last years, last days, you know, um, on this earth. Um, but you know, such a beautiful voice, beautiful singer, great, just a, a talent that'll be missed, you know, forever. Uh, and it's immortalized in all of the albums he appeared on, but we do luckily the band gets back together and records the album black gives way to blue that dropped in, I think, 2009, I think is what we're looking at. Um, so super, super hyped to kind of, you know, we're, we're getting close to this thing. We got three more albums, uh, you know, and this, you know, just also in recent music news, I mean, man, Ozzy dropped a new single. Uh, King's X dropped a new single. Queen's Right did. Megadeth did. All these bands dropped these new singles, like, out of nowhere. So, you know, if you guys haven't really uh, been keeping up with that, maybe check those out. Just out of nowhere, like all within like the, a span of like two days, these everybody started dropping this stuff. So really exciting stuff going on now. Um, but yeah, next time guys, Alice in Chains, Black Gives Way to Blue will be covered. But what are you guys' thoughts on this Unplugged uh, album here? And you know, you guys kind of dig the the style they went with here and like Lane's voice. It did sound kind of different. Um, you know, not again, not as powerful. Like you can't hear like as much power being generated back there from like you know like the live at the more uh concert or some of the other shows like on the dirt tour and stuff but it's still there and it's he's hitting these notes and it's just incredible sounding but maybe you guys like aren't really into that or whatever uh maybe you guys aren't into the unplugged deal you know let me talk about that too you know if you and i, I totally get it it's not for everybody um but i just love to hear you guys thoughts on this maybe some other unplugged shows uh you guys dig but stay tuned next time Black is Way to Blue will be covered. Like, subscribe, comment, and thanks.